Welcome, everybody, to the pilot episode of This Week in the Future, coming to you from AI for All. So first up this week, super exciting announcement from OpenAI regarding super alignment. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the concept of alignment in machine learning, essentially, whenever you assign a machine learning model to complete a task, you give it data, you give it feedback while you're training, it's going to come up with a strategy to solve whatever task you're giving. It. The alignment problem enters because a neural network is a black box. At training time, it's very difficult to align on both what exactly the goal is that the model's trying to achieve, as well as the strategy that the model will use to achieve it. A great example of this is models trained to complete video games. And we, in our mind, have a space of successful strategies to complete video games. Machine learning models don't care about what people think are successful strategies. Sometimes they don't even care about the goal that you've assigned them, and they will misalign on the goal. What we see happen is that the machine learning model will come up with a strategy that does not fall into what we see as a successful strategy, could even see it as a bad strategy. So for example, maybe it can do some weird sequence of keys and like glitch into the wall and teleport to the end of the level immediately. And that's a misalignment on completing the goal because we don't want to make a model that glitches through the wall and finishes the level instantly. We want to make a model that plays the game as well as possible. So that's a pretty rudimentary example. This is a huge problem in AI. OpenAI has announced that they're going to dedicate 20% of their resources towards super alignment and towards an AI that can align AI is really exciting. Another big step forward from Microsoft, they released a paper called Textbooks Are All You Need. In this paper, they trained a new model called Phi1. And the objective in training this model was to collect the highest quality data possible. It takes an enormous amount of data, or we thought we knew that it takes an enormous amount of data to train a really good model like this. What Microsoft did is they collected 6 billion tokens of textbook quality quality data. So basically the best kind of text data you can get stuff from like Encyclopedia Britannica. They augmented that data with another billion tokens or so. And the model total size is 1.3 billion parameters. The smaller models go down to 350 million. This training set size is somewhere in the range of about a 40th the data set ChatGPT was trained on. The model size itself in terms of parameter count is in the range of 1 100th of the size. Way less training time, way less computational requirements. And the really exciting part is that it actually exceeded GPT-3 3.5 on some tests. This is really good news. This means that you don't need billions of dollars to train excellent models. It also is going to mean that LLMs in the future are going to be more accessible. Maybe they'll be posted locally on like our phone. More big news. This is a big open AI week. GPT-4 API went public. Originally GPT-4, you could use it if you have GPT plus through the web application, but that's not something that you can bring to scale. And it was just available on a waitlist basis. So mostly available to researchers who are doing interesting research using GPT-4 or to companies. And what I think may even be bigger news is that the code interpreter has also been made public to ChatGPT plus users. What code interpreter allows you to do is to actually execute code in many different languages within your GPT interface. ChatGPT web app usage dropped this week. A lot of speculation as to why that happened. In my opinion, it doesn't mean that LLMs are getting less popular. The sort of sensationalism of the LLMs has died out a little bit. There's a few possibilities here. APIs may be getting more use. People may be using GPT within their own applications for their own use cases to improve their workflows rather than logging into the web app every single time. Other LLMs may also be getting more traffic. Quicker news, Inflection AI announced a almost $900 million supercomputer. That is 20,000 GPUs, 800 really powerful CPUs, a computer projected to consume 31 megawatts of power, about enough to power 20,000 homes, which is crazy. This is not going to be the last giant supercomputer that we see. Every big company is going to want to build these supercomputers, much less expensive to have your own cloud hosted solution for ML training and inference than it is to pay for somebody else's. Bots are taking over social media, according to Twitter, who just rate limited all users. So they said there's too many bots on Twitter. And so we're going to limit all of them. And all users can only view so many tweets. It's not going to affect most users, but for super users of Twitter, they're pretty upset. Excellent timing for Meta's new Twitter clone threads. And also think this is a good opportunity to bring up something called the dead internet theory, which is the idea that most of the activity activity on the internet these days is bots, and there's not that many people actually interacting with it. There's a lot of research that's been done around it. It's worth checking out sometime. It's kind of a cool thought experiment, especially as bots become ever more convincing and more powerful. Last piece of news, we're seeing more competition in the enterprise hardware space, which is really good. It's not just NVIDIA working on creating really powerful enterprise hardware tools. Dell, HP, 
Lenovo, they're all announcing new partnerships in the AI space. Everyone's super motivated. They want to build their own hardware. They want to sell specialized hardware for training models, hosting models, moving towards more powerful Gen AI. And the more competition there is in the hardware space, the better. Well, everybody, for those of you that stuck around to the end, thanks for listening. This is going to be a new weekly episode. So if you like what you hear, tune in again next week for a similar batch of news in the AI space. Thanks again. Y'all have a good one.